All right, let's talk about the return value of functions a little bit more. So we said that if you have a function called func, you could have as many parameters as you wanted. So you could have, for example, an int a, and they could be different types. You could have um, double b, and you could have string c so it could be different types and as many of them as you would like now you have to make sure that for each variable you need to specify what type it has then the return type which could be anything so it could be an int it could be a double it could or it could just not even have a return type and we're going to talk about that but if it doesn't have a return type like um setup or like uh, draw and uh, the return type is going to be void and we'll talk about that in a little bit so the return type could be int uh, it could be double uh, it could be a boolean uh, the return type could really be, be be any of these and then of course you have the body of the function the thing is if you do have a return type so if your return type is not void if you do have a return type you must return the value that you say you're going to uh, return so for example this function we don't know what it does right it does something but at the end you must say return and you must return an integer if you return a string here you're going to get an error because you have said that the return type is an integer so the return type uh, so you're going to return for example a and this function let's say who knows what it does right just doing that as, a, as, as an example so a little bit more about return type first of all the return statement yields the function result so whenever you have a return statement uh, for example here your uh, double cube volume and you're calculating the cube and then you're returning your results back to the calling function so hopefully that's clear for everybody the second one return statement can terminate a function when call when it, it can terminate a function call immediately that means if you in the middle of your function if you said return um, your function um, dies and terminates right away it doesn't execute the rest of your function so if I said if I said return here um, the function doesn't even look at the rest of my code it's just gonna terminate and uh, and, that, and that's it um, the third uh, is, is really important the return statement can handle unusual cases so what is an unusual case for example here if um, when you call this function if by mistake you sent let's say a negative number here let's say you sent negative 5 as the, the the length of course that doesn't make sense you can't have a negative volume so if that was the case you could handle it with an if statement saying that if side length is less than 0 then you return you return 0 so that could be one thing that your your function could could handle uh, so please do go over these uh, slides uh, here I have an example where um, I have declared a variable um, and then I calculate the result and then I'm, I'm returning volume um, here is a case that as I, as I talked about we don't declare a variable anymore we just simply do the math and we're going to return the result of this operation so we talked about this already I have, I have lots of examples in my slides as well so as as you watch the videos um, then go back to the slides as well and, and have a look at them and, and follow the examples there as well here is a, an, an error that that could happen here you are saying double cube volume and you're saying well if side length is greater and less than or greater or equal to zero then do the calculations this is going to cause into a compilation error um, because you know if this is again if this is minus five what happens is um, you're going to come here and there is no return value so this happens it so happens that one of the branches because because if you if you go inside of this if you're going to have a return if you don't go into it you don't have a return statement so this, so try this for yourself uh this is going to give you a compilation error because of the fact that um there could be a case that there is no return 
um, statement. All right, let's talk about when we have um, a void function. So it's very important that you guys understand that when we talk about the input and output to a function, we're talking about data. You see what I mean? So um, when you have, for example, let's say, um, int sum and int sum is going to do int a and int b and we're going to return a plus b you see this function is receiving data and it's outputting data it's it's sending data back what if you had a function that didn't receive data um, or actually it doesn't matter if it receives data or not what if you had a function that didn't send data back so for example um, if I had a function called so if I had a function called print no that's what it was called uh, I'm passing it int a and int b and all this function does so I'm going to leave the return type blank and all this function does is it's going to print these two numbers so print the content of these two variables. That's basically all it does. So when it prints these, it doesn't send anything back to the calling function. You see, if I have void setup, I could say int result equal sum 5 and 6. Here I'm calling a function, I'm sending data, and then I'm receiving something. So I'm so the result of this addition is going to be saved inside of res. Here I'm sending two data members and they're just being printed to the screen. So if I have a void function over here, Now what's happening is I can I I just say let's say um, let's say I would say print num and I'm going to send five and six. Now when I call print num, I'm not going to receive any data back. Instead, these two will just be printed to the screen. So in this case. this is going to be a void function because simply I'm not expecting anything anything back so let's do a couple more of these void functions let's say I have a function called say hello so underscore because it's so function name is uh, is one word you can't have two word for function name just like variable names so let's say say hello it doesn't receive anything and it is a void function so if this is the case then the void function will just say hello so let's say if I have a setup function by the way it doesn't matter if the setup is beneath your functions or above your functions it's better to have your setup and draw on, on, on top though and then have all your functions underneath but uh, it'll work either way so I would just say say hello 
and that's how I am calling my um, say hello function. It's a so I'm not passing any data. There's no data being passed. Um, there is no data. Um, there's no data being passed, and there's no data being sent back to my my setup function. You see, so that's why this is um, this is void, and here you see that there are no parameters being being passed. There are generally uh, also let's let's do let's do another one. Um, let's do one that is um, let's have a void setup and let's have a function called draw circle and this function we say that it's going to take um, an int a and an int b and what it does is it simply draws um, a circle um, in, in, in this way. So for example, it'll call the ellipse function in A and B, and then it does the size A divided by two and A again a divided by two so um it could be a crazy function especially if a and b are large it's going to be a really really large circle but let's just say that's that's what it does right it's 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 something silly to do but but anyways so this is what it does and, and when we call this function um we can just say draw circle and pass it let's say a hundred and 100. So here, this function, um, it's going to output this to the screen, but again, there is no data that it needs to send back. So there is no, there is, when there's no data to send back, we're going to have um, void, right? We're, we're getting data in, but we are actually not having any data um, sent back to to the calling function as a result of this you're going to draw a, a circle on the screen uh, in point so if this was the screen in 100 and 100 you're going to be drawing something that is 50 has a radius of 25 or diameter of um, 50 uh, so, when are we going to, when does it make sense to have a void function? So, when to have a void function? Number one, when all your function does is draw or write to cancel. Actually, I'm just going to generalize. When, when, when it draws or write to screen. So when there is no data being sent back. Number two, the, the second time that, that you would do this is if, uh, so I should say when, when your function is using global data. Or by data, I mean global variables. I'm sure you guys remember when we talked about global variables and functions. So let's uh, revisit this. If I have void set 
setup. And in my setup, I have int a is 10. And then I have, let's just say, void let's call it anything so like void foo int b let's initialize this to 20 now let's have a global variable int x and let's have that as 50. Now let's run this program. If you run this program in memory in oh, the first thing that appears is setup okay in in setup i'm going to have well actually technically the first thing that appears is the global stuff so the in in the global x is 50 then setup appears with a as 10 okay now nothing else appears basically the program ends right unless you call foo so if I call foo here so foo doesn't have a return value I'm just doing it to make a point and it doesn't take any variables as input so there we go that's uh, that's that's foo when I call foo foo appears Okay, so foo appears here, and um, when it does appear, we get b made, and b is 20. Now, if the program just ended like this, foo would die because it's, it's ending, and then setup would die, and then we'll be done. But I want to actually um, make, 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 make a quick point here. So basically... In foo, if I said, for example, b equals a plus b, is this going to work? No, that's not going to work because foo does not know a. Similarly here, if I went inside of my setup and I said, okay, after even after calling foo, I said a equals a plus b. Does that work? No, that doesn't work because in setup, there is no such a thing as B. They can't see each other. They're in different spaces. However, what happens is, oh, so these two lines I'm going to erase because they are wrong. But both foo and setup they both can see x so for example i could go ahead here and say and basically say a equals x plus a i could i could go ahead and do that and i could in here i could say b equals x plus this uh, this is this is completely fine, right? So what happens is in this case, when foo is made, foo, b is twenty, then b becomes x plus b, which is seventy. Then function foo is done, so this dies and goes goes. Well, actually, no. Oops. Then then this is done and this goes away. This is the source code. <laughs> Setup is still here. Um, then we, we are going to come back and do this line. So we say a equals x plus a. And um, 
then A is going to become 60. And um, then the program is over. So that's done too. That's how uh, memory basically um, works. So let's look at an example where global variables and functions are utilized and we have void data types or void return types. Consider the bouncing ball um, without functions such that it doesn't leave the screen. So we have two variables. We have um, int x as a global variable set to 100 and we have speed as as 2 we have some some other code here um, that uh, maybe the setup function and, and and what have you then in the draw we have we, there are a few things that we do first of all we increment x by speed each time then we actually handle the bouncing ball so if it, so we don't let the ball go out of the screen and then we actually display the ball in such a way that uh, we so the, we use the, the fill function the stroke function um, and also we actually do uh, draw the ellipse so these are the three different parts that uh, you would do so if you wanted to do the pseudocode of this uh, draw function you would say move the ball uh, bounce the ball or don't let the ball leave um, the the window and also display the ball at the end so each of these could be placed in in a function you can kind of see so you can have void move and that's just going to increase x then you're going to have bounce where it's also void so there's no data being sent back it's just manipulating the global variables and then of course the display where you would use x to display and then your draw function um, you simply have the background which was in the beginning you have move um, oops you have move you have um, bounce and you have display that's basically your your draw so your draw is tiny now and all of these are made into um, your uh, you are placed in your in your functions so when you are manipulate so when you're writing these functions you have to think to yourself that what data am I getting as input and what data am I outputting if you're not outputting a data you're going to have a void function if you have data to send back then you need a, a data type don't forget you can have at most one data that you would that you would return back in processing the way we are doing it right now because you because the draw function uh, cannot have variables declared inside of it and uh, whenever you work with it you're, you're going to be using um, global variables therefore you're going to have a lot of functions that are ultimately going to have a void return because simply they're not sending any data back they're just using uh, global uh, data 